What's up, everybody? It's Andy with LightenUpAtShoot.com, and welcome to Photoshop 101. The first video I'm going to do for you guys is all about layers. The reason is because I think layers are the foundation of Photoshop. It's what sets it apart from Adobe Lightroom and many other editing or image editing tools. Layers are probably the best description I've ever heard about layers is using an overhead projector. Just imagine you have an overhead projector. We have an original image on the overhead that is being broadcasted, okay? And then we have these transparent sheets or these layers that you stack on top so that I do not affect my original image. Let me give you an example. We have this one image of these birds open with this beautiful Florida sunset in the background. And let's say for whatever reason, I want to draw something on top of this. I want it to say layers. Okay. So I write layers on top of this image. I only have one layer. So guess what I just did? I just wrote layers on my original image. Now, if I was just, if I just wanted to do that and I'm done and I want zero manipulation, it's okay. That's fine. But what if I wanted to manipulate it a little bit? What if I, I messed up on the S and I want to erase it? What do I do? I mean, there's nothing I can do because I have now messed up my original image and screwed it up. So the way I avoid that, and let me just go back here and let me give you a little shortcut for going back. I really want you guys to get used to using your shortcut keys. It saves so much time in the long run. Uh, if you want to go back just one step, you hit Control Z on a PC or Command Z on a Mac. If you want to go back multiple steps, you hit Control Alt Z, and you can just keep hitting Control Alt Z, and it'll go all the way back up. I think the default is like 20 space, 20 times, 20 steps. Okay, so now we're back where we started, and I want to write layers again, but I want it to be editable. So what I do is I come down here. Do you see my this little square here? This is my new layer icon, and I click on that, and you will see that a new layer suddenly pops up. But like I told you guys, I want you guys to get used to using shortcut keys. So the shortcut to create a new layer is Control Shift N, and my new layer icon or dialog box will show up. And here I can name it. So let's just name it Layer because I'm going to write Layer. I can choose my color uh, that I want for organization purposes. I can choose my blend mode or my opacity. I can do all that stuff directly from here. But I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to hit OK. And you'll see that my new layers is, um, is created. Yes, it took a little bit longer than just going down here and clicking. So if you don't want to see the dialog box, listen to this, guys. You hit Control, Shift, Alt, N, and the layer will just pop up. OK? So if you don't want to see that dialog box, you don't want to name it, you don't want to do anything, you want to do it really fast, Control, Shift, Alt, N. On a PC, control or Command Shift Alt N on a on a Mac. Okay. Anyways, back to the layers. So I've just created this transparent layer on top of my original image. So now I can do whatever I want. Let's just write layers again. And guess what? This is my little visibility for these layers. So I'm just going to turn this off. Guess what? My original image is still intact. That's awesome. So now, since I have layers just on this one. Uh, layer by itself, since I wrote layers on this one layer by itself, I can erase if I have to erase with my eraser tool. I can move it around if I want to move it around. I can do all that stuff. Or I can blend it into my other layers using these blend modes. Since we're over here, let me tell you guys a little bit about this layers palette. When I have a layer selected, two things are going to happen. The first thing is that I'm going to have the blue show up or whatever color it is that shows up when you have something selected on your computer and I'm also going to know that the layer is selected because I have a little border if you guys zoom in and I'll zoom it really close in for you guys you see this little white and black border around it that just means that that layer is selected when we get to masks it's really important for you to know that this border selects as well <clears throat> okay oh having this layers this layer one selected which is where I wrote my layers and you can technically see it here <clears throat> I have my blend modes and my blend mode options are how this layer that I have selected is going to interact with the layer below it 
we'll talk about that in another video because it is a completely powerful uh, animal that should be talked about just by itself. We have the opacity of this layer, so whichever layer I have selected here, this is what's going to graduate its, its transparency. We have the locking features of each layer, and these are super powerful, and a lot of people don't use them, they don't, um, or don't use them to their full potential. Let me just pause here one second, uh, just to give you guys, who maybe are a little bit more ahead, uh, know how this works. So. Our locking feature. What do these locking features do? First, let me take a step back and just turn off this background layer so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. <clears throat> we have a whole bunch of squares here. You see that? That means these are all transparent pixels. I have no data or no information in these pixels whatsoever. They are completely transparent. The only thing I have on this layer, as you can see, is my layers that I wrote. Right, and so if I lock, and I you see this little box here, it resembles these little transparent layers. This means I'm locking my transparent pixels. So if I click on this, I can't paint anywhere that it is transparent, but I can paint, and let me just take another brush, wherever it's not transparent. And these pixels, you see my layers here, that's not transparent, so I could paint all over this however I want and you could do really cool effects and really cool stuff it's just an easy way for you guys to manipulate manipulate pixels that are not transparent which is very very useful for certain things okay so you guys now know how to lock your transparent pixels we now have a brush and this pretty much means I can't paint anywhere okay because it's completely locked from painting so it's very very if you are done painting in layer and you don't want to accidentally paint on it I just hit that brush tool and it's locked and it's done uh, the next one we have here is our move tool so this means I can paint anywhere I want okay the only thing I can't do is move it and this is really important when you have aligned layers that are aligned or when we get a little bit further into cloning and healing and we just can't mismatch or move those, that layer around boom I hit that lock and that layer is not moving anywhere and it, nothing's getting out of whack very very cool um, the last one that we have is this lock and this will not let me move or paint or do anything that sucker's locked down it's ready to go I can't do anything I can't even erase it look at it it doesn't even let me erase it so when you have an, a layer that is extremely important and you don't want anything to happen for it boom hit that button and you are done the one I use the most though is this transparent pixel one uh, it's really really powerful I mean how else would I be able to just take this image for example and take this green and create this huge like this huge feathered effect kind of thing I mean it's a little bit cheesy right now I know guys but you see what I'm talking about okay it's just really really powerful it's not affecting any of my um, transparent colors or anything that's just the worst job I've ever seen in my life but anyways uh, you see you see my point here okay now and I've done all of that without actually affecting my original image notice I'm just going to give you guys a quick little rundown as, as, again. Notice, my layer is locked. I can't paint on, on transparent pixels. I'm on top of my original image. And guess what? Look at this. See? It's not affecting the, the image below. It's only affecting those pixels that have, uh, have been originally been drawn on prior to placing that lock. Um, the next thing you guys should know is down here we have this toolbox down here we have the garbage can which you guys know what the garbage does all I do is click and drag this layer of the garbage and it erases it I have the new layer icon down here which I click to create a new layer but you guys already know the shortcuts I have my group this is basically like a filing cabinet so it's to keep you guys organized I use it a lot when, for example, I'm manipulating an entire image and let's say I have a group of layers that is just relevant to the model's eyes. So after I'm done manipulating that, I just shove them all into a folder and put them into a group and uh, I don't have to worry about it. You know, that way I can start lowering my, 
the size of all these layers and layers and stacks of layers that I have. All right, and you can just always just throw that away. The next thing I have are my adjustment layers, and these, just like our blend modes, are going to require an entire video just for themselves. They're extremely powerful, very cool things. Uh, just know that down here is where you get your adjustment layers from. The next one, masks. Again, I'm like a broken record. This is going to have a video all by itself, but these masks, in conjunction with the layers video, is going to turn your images into a brand new thing. Uh, they're super duper powerful and masks are pretty much the way we're going to control the way one image can come through and show uh, to your final image. Uh, we'll talk about that later. That was a little bit confusing. Don't even worry about it. Just know that this is your masks icon right here. The next one we have are, is our effects panel. And when we click on this, we have different options for all these you know, we have drop shadows and inner shadows and outer glows and bevels and satin and color overlays. Again, we're going to have to go over this in a video all by itself. But just know that this little FX means that uh, that's what that means. And last but not least, we have this icon that is a little chain. And what the chain means is if I want to link two layers together, all I do is select them. And I select different layers, guys, just so you know, by clicking one of them and then either holding control if I want to click the layer right below it or right on top of it okay or if I want to select all three of them then I hold the shift key and click down okay so it's control click on a on a PC command click on a Mac or it's shift click on a PC or Mac and then it'll select all your layers alright so in any case guys just know layers are like a transparency uh, like an overhead projector they're like transparent sheets that you you stack on top of each other they don't all have to be transparent they can be images and images but it's just whichever one you stack on top of each other is going to be the more dominant one all right and that guys is layers 101